But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Here ends the first reading. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 23. The response is, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Our gradual hymn is number 174. We will sing verses 1 and 4. he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva 
and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How were your eyes opened? And he replied, The man called Jesus, made clay, and anointed my eyes, and told me, Go to Siloam and watch. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus made clay and opened his eyes on the Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. And he said to them, He put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a vision among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? And he said, He is a prophet. Here ends the Gospel reading. Praise, Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated. In our prayers today, let us remember the sick and the suffering and all people for whom our prayers are offered. We pray for the repose of the soul of all those who have died, especially today for Richard Anderson of Candor, who died um, yesterday, and his funeral will be private this week, as all funerals have to be private according to state regulations at this time. We will be doing church each Saturday as long as that legally may be allowed. Um, I want to thank you for all seating yourselves a safe distance from each other. Social distancing is necessary. There is hand sanitizer in the back and um, sanitizing wipes if anybody um, needs to uh, sanitize, you're welcome to do so. Instead of passing the chalice at communion, we will, um, I will consecrate the chalice. It will be left on the altar, and the congregation will receive the host if you so desire. Um, it's not necessary. If you do not want to receive the host, that's entirely up to you. Uh, but I will pass out the host to people that are um, open to receiving the host. I want to thank you for your tolerance during, during this most difficult time period. Um, and for those that might be home viewing this, don't forget that our church uh, bills continue to come in. So uh, we've had several requests of who to send a check to. And you can send it to St. Luke's Chapel, 92 Main Street in Vanetton, one four. 889 14889 and we appreciate whatever you can do on the bulletin today I put a picture of Franklin Delano Roosevelt who in his 1933 inaugural said we have the only thing we have to fear is fear itself and there's a great controversy in the world now over whether the panic is a panic because of the disease or if the disease is as bad as it is and there's all kinds of mixed messages. But I know that God's love is among us and God's love is what we seek as Christians. It doesn't allow us to be careless. It wants us to be careful so that we can continue to serve in our earthly journey. 
the rules and regulations imposed by our leaders and those in charge are for our safety. If we can no longer do services here at the church, we will continue to stream them, and we're going to continue that throughout this ordeal. I was thinking as I was saying my prayers this morning that I was telling God that we're in quite a pickle. And I can remember as a youngster putting, trying to put a chain on this old bicycle I had because the chain would keep coming off because the sprocket was bent. And I can remember saying, well, I'm in quite a pickle. And I can't remember if it was my mother or father that said, you've got to remember that a cucumber becomes a pickle. And that's the goodness of that cucumber. That after it goes through all those trials and tribulations of becoming a pickle, it's delicious. And I was thinking as we're going through the pickle we're in, that it's very probable that some goodness will come from this horrible event in our lives. If nothing else, it will teach us to appreciate what we have. If nothing else, it will teach us to reconnect with those we love those that we live with, those that we can communicate with. For whatever reason, this horrible disease is stalking us. I trust through faith that somehow goodness will come of it. I think of the Holy Week and I think of the trials and tribulations of Jesus. The triumphant entry on Palm Sunday and how he was hailed by the people as a king and how yet inside himself he knew things were going wrong. And he experienced every emotion imaginable. Betrayal by a friend that he had chosen. The pain and agony of the cross. But yet the night before he gathered his friends at the table, knowing that it was going to be the Last Supper. And he gathered his friends at the table and even though in the presence of his friends, the person who betrayed him. And the horrible crucifixion. Imagine having nails driven into your hands and feet and your side pierced. The agony and pain of that. But yet we hear from the cross the Son of God speaking to us. We hear him say in forgiveness, Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. He tells the two thieves crucified next to him, Before this day ends, we shall be in paradise. He didn't say, I shall be in paradise. He said, we shall be in paradise. He experienced the act of being forsaken when he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And with all of those emotions, in the end he said, it is finished. And he gave up the ghost. But it wasn't finished. 
It was just beginning. The agony and suffering of the cross brought the understanding that we live beyond the change called death. And we receive the glories that God has bestowed upon us. We come to an understanding of God's spirit that dwells in us. And as I've often said, each of us has a personal faith unlike any other faith of any other person. We come together in a bond of love, but each of us has an individual faith that will see us through our lives until we too say it is finished. Our world, our nation, is on a similar journey that Jesus was on, where we're going to go through suffering, we're going to go through agony. But yet from that suffering and agony, we come together. We come together out of God's greatest gift, the gift of love. And it will be that gift of love that will see us through. It will strengthen our spirit in the most difficult hours of weakness. And through that weakness, we will strengthen our spirits to know the love that surrounds us. Not only God's love, but the gift of love he gave us with the people in our lives. I mentioned in the bulletin this morning that I email out that the simple prayer of the Lord's Prayer covers everything. But it's about goodness, triumphant over evil. And that's exactly what the resurrection is about. Goodness, triumphant over evil. It may look bleak at this time, but yet we will come to have stories that the generations have shared I was thinking of the people of our parents' age that went through the Depression. The greatest generation that went through World War II and sacrificed for our nation and the world so that everyone could live a more comfortable life. Subsequent wars, Korea, Vietnam, the Iraqi freedom, all of the wars where we've tried to maintain the spirit of goodness while going through suffering and agony. Let us trust our faith. I'm a real believer in the power of prayer, and the Lord's Prayer covers everything. But I also like to, I learned years ago when I dated a Catholic girl to say the Hail Marys. And I've often thought, whenever I had issues, I would take them to my mother because she had more wisdom than anybody else on earth, or so I believed. And who better to take our sorrows to than the Blessed Mother? I will do the Ave Maria at the end of the service, the Hail Mary song, put to song, a sacred, sacred hymn. But let us trust in the power of prayer, the Holy Family, and all the people to see us through this. And if someone we love gets sick, or if we get sick, let's let that faith be one of our best medicines. Let that faith be our strength to carry on the way Christ carried on the way Christ left us his message over 2,000 years ago. So let us go forth in peace, carrying that gift of love out into the world. Be in touch with those by phone or e email or 
uh, texting or whatever you know how to do technologically. Uh, I'm not very adept at that. But yet, I will try and be in touch with those that I love because they are truly a gift that God has given me. So let us go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Let us share together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Our oratory hymn is number 370. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 6.
for our community, the state, the nation, and the world in which we live. Help us to preserve your creation for the generations yet to come, that they too may be partakers of your kingdom here on earth as in heaven. We pray for all people who cannot be with us, especially for the sick and the suffering, and for all people for whom our prayers are now desired. Jenny Redsicker, Alyssa Vanderpool, Dorothy Middaw, Donna Lesh, Beth O'Donnell, Joe Brennan, Steve Frazier, Ann Price, Galios Moika, Connie Siapa, Nancy Zamoyski, Kathy Garrett, Katie Ahart, Katie Smith, Larry Pataki, Jackie Pataki, T.J. Hart, Barry Craddock, Amanda Barassi, George Bowen, Jerry Gentili, Sal Giannino, Richard Halstead, Cindy Burdick, Helen Winters, Patricia Lapierre, Terry Collins, Joseph Robert Katz, Ward Hungerford, Jack Carr, Richard Benskoy, Dominique Leone, Gloria Kunzman, Bob Wilcox, Dan Jackson, Mary Burkle, Greg Lawrence, Lawrence Gibson, Greg, Lori Glow, Diane Craig, Martha Brewster, Bill Palmer, Sally Marks, Ed Gilbert, John, Geraldine Peters, Becky Lamoureau, Michael McKee, and Linda Long. We trust through faith that you will touch them with your healing power. We pray this day for all those who have died in the hope of the resurrection. We pray especially this day for your servant, Richard Anderson. We trust through faith that you have opened your arms in love and mercy and have received them into your heavenly kingdom. Be with their families and friends as they mourn their loss, that their empty hearts may be filled with the consolation of your love and the joyful memories they have shared throughout the years. And now together let us confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We seek forgiveness for these our sins and are heartily sorry for these our wrongdoings. Have mercy on us and forgive us our sins so that we may return to your path and walk in your ways all of our days. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us nod to one another a sign of love and peace.
And he said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, Lord, we present ourselves, our souls and bodies, in reasonable hope to life everlasting, trusting through our faith and our love of you that you shall always be with us, that we can never be alone. Strengthen us with your good spirit that we may come to know your love for us, following the example that you have given us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us all to pray. Christ, the bread of heaven. 
Christ. Send us out into the world, giving us the things to do that are necessary for your creation. As we offer ourselves to him who died and rose again, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Closing songs number 151, we'll see verses 1, 4, and 5. 